ever eager to expand their knowledge, Aes Sedai researchers Miren Eronai and Bedoman from the University of Kolamdan discovered a new source of energy that was unlike the One Power in that it was a unified force and did not need to be divided into male and female halves. Choosing the Sharom, a large floating white spear above their university as the site for their experiment, they attempted drilling a hole into the pattern of reality in order to access the true power beyond. Unfortunately, what they had actually discovered was the prison of the Dark One, and by creating an opening known as the Boar, Shaitan, as he became known, was now able to directly influence the world. The resulting explosion then destroyed the Sharom, and with the dark touch of Shaitan now loose in the world, a once tranquil island was transformed into the dark mountain known as Sheol Ghul, which was surrounded by a desolate wasteland and became the focal point of the Dark One's power, where the Boar could be located. Over the next centuries, many turned to worship the Dark One, embracing violence, selfishness, and greed. A number of powerful Aes Sedai also joined him in the hopes of great reward and positions of privilege in his new order, such as Ishar Morad Twain, later known as Agenor, who created the shadow spawn races such as Trollocs to serve as the main army of the Dark One. Yet of all the noteworthy figures who went over to the darkness, none were more important than Elan Morin Tedronai, the great intellectual who rivaled even Louis was Theron in magical ability. Later known as Ishamael, the betrayer of hope, he was unique among the followers of the Dark One in that he did not join because of a desire for power or position, nor did he join to gain access to the true power, which made them capable of magic beyond that of the One Power. Rather, he made his decision using reason and logic to determine that the victory of darkness over the light was inevitable. Elan became increasingly convinced that the seven ages of the Wheel of Time were repeating in an unending loop, and that in every rotation, the Dark One's direct influence was to be unleashed upon the world. And so in order for the wheel to continue on, the people of the world would have to unite and fight back against the darkness, finding a way to seal him back into his prison. However, this meant that the forces of light would have to constantly fight this battle over and over again for eternity just to survive, whereas the Dark One only had to achieve victory one time in order to destroy the wheel entirely. Seeing no point in resisting the inevitable, Elan embraced the Dark One and allowed himself to become first among the Forsaken, wanting nothing more than to end the cycle of existence. However, because his reasons for joining the Dark One differed greatly from the others, he did not sneak off and join Shaitan in secret, instead going directly to the Hall of Servants and announcing his plans before all the Aes Sedai, sparking outrage among those in attendance. Following the years of collapse, when society significantly regressed, the War of Shadow erupted, seeing the Forsaken and their army armies of shadow spawn spread violence and chaos throughout the world. Although the fighting went back and forth, after a decade of war, Luce Theron Telamon, known as the Dragon, defeated Ishamael at the gates of Parandisen. Yet this was not enough to end the war, and so Luis Theron developed a plan to seal the boar at Sheol Ghul using seven Hearthstone seals. However, in addition to the six male Aes Sedai needed, seven powerful female Aes Sedai must also be involved to complete the mission successfully. But the female Aes Sedai rejected his plan, coming up with their own involving two Sa Angriel, which might create a shield over the boar. However, after suffering further attacks from the forces of the Dark One, this plan became impossible, but still they did not support Luce Theron. After an attack against Parandisen, the dragon decided to go forward with his plan without the aid of the female Aes Sedai and would march to Sheol Ghul alongside 113 male Aes Sedai companions, followed by an army of 10,000 warriors. After battling the Forsaken and their dark armies, Luce Theron and his people made it to the boar and successfully managed to place the seals, closing the hole in the Dark One's prison. In addition, they were able to trap the 13 most powerful Forsaken as well, save for Ishamael, who was only partially imprisoned, able to return to the world for roughly four decades every thousand years. And while the plan of Luce Theron succeeded in its primary mission, it required using Sidene to directly touch the darkness, which allowed Shaitan to perform a counter stroke, tainting the male half of the One Power. This taint then led male Aes Sedai into madness, using their mighty powers to wreak havoc and chaos upon the world. Luce Theron also went mad and used his powers to kill his beloved wife Iliana, as well as all his friends and family. Yet his insanity was so severe that he could not recognize his own actions and spent his days wandering around the ruins of his home, searching for his wife and children. Because Ishamael was only partially imprisoned, he was able to appear 
here before his hated enemy, Lustheren, and use the true power to heal his madness, so that he might see the horrors committed by his own hand. Lustheren was so distraught over the death of his family that he teleported far away and killed himself with a great explosion of magic that created Dragon Mount. Yet according to the prophecies from the Karathon cycle, the dragon would one day be reborn to once again fight against the shadow. As the world fell to chaos, those among the hundred companions who survived the battle at Sheol Ghul went on to abuse Sidon to such an extent they caused the reshaping of continents. Eventually, the surviving female Aes Sedai were able to track down the last remaining male channelers and killed them or else gentled their mind, stripping them of their ability to use the one power. And so, with the breaking of the world, they entered into the Third Age. Love audiobooks? Then be sure to check out Audible, where they have the world's largest collection available. Simply sign up through the link in the description box below and get two free audiobooks to start out. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Kagor the Reborn Snow, Oliver Otterborn, Zack of All Trades Trials, and Justo Sparrowhawk. If you would like to help Civilization X, click on the Patreon link, and please be sure to like and subscribe, and click on the links to see more.